Forgiveness like the tide rolling in Taking up the space where shame has lived Receiving all that you died to give mm, Let the wind blow Let the tide roll to the earth knows you're the god of love let my dry bones sing a new song all the glory to the god of love
it if he can He's moving on the way The dawn is breaking So lift your eyes and see it He's better than your dream And everything you've lost Love's return Today I'm going to talk about the final installment of a series we're calling Do the New. And today I will specifically want to talk about passion to live the truth. Say it with me. Passion to live the truth. You know the actual word in the Greek truth means real. You shall know what's real and what's real will set you free. To be real, to do real is not to be a Christian, quote unquote, but to be a disciple of Jesus, an imitator, a disciplined learner under the Lordship of Jesus. Now listen, let me just prophesy to you for a second. I don't think things are getting better soon. I believe we have some rough days ahead. I believe things may even get a little bit worse. But don't be afraid. Jesus is returning soon. God is the one setting up the atmosphere. You know, when the devil has a plan, God has a bigger plan. The devil had a plan to crucify Jesus and kill Jesus. God had a plan to redeem mankind. The enemy has a plan to destroy America, but God has a better plan to bring revival to America. God himself is going to turn this country around, and it's going to be as a result of a, the great outpouring of his Holy Spirit through his church, and you're a great part of it. Now, Matthew 24, I want you to read because we're in this idea that, you know what? We're in the last days. We're coming into the last days where we can quickly see the coming of Jesus. And we're just making ourselves ready for this great moment, right? Matthew 24 is a chapter about the second coming. We're going to start with verse 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things will be. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? We're still asking that question. And right now we're getting the feeling it's rushing soon to us. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. That's the first sign. This is his answer. He said the first sign is this. Don't be deceived for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Well, when people read that, they're like, oh, they're talking about like Jim Jones characters. They're talking about, you know, crazy person coming long hair with a robe and I'm Jesus. And uh, listen, he's not speaking of some weird character saying he's the Christ. He's speaking of false Christianity. He's speaking of people saying this is Jesus, but it's not Jesus. And this is the church, but it's not the church. He's saying the great sign of the last days, well, first sign will be that there will be all kinds of Christianities that deny who Jesus is, that lose sight of the truth and ignore what Jesus said to do, but instead become religious. Jesus said in the last days, it's going to mark, it'll be a very religious time. So you got to be careful. Do not be deceived. Let me just tell you this. I don't like to talk about the devil, but the devil, he is a religious liar and he tells compromised people what they want to hear and then they set about to create God in their own image. They're the ones that, they don't want to stop doing certain things. They don't want to start doing certain things. So they just craft a God through satanic inspiration. They begin to say, God is this way and God is that way. The Bible says they turn the truth into a lie and they worship the creature more than the creator. So people tend to, when they drift away from the truth, they tend to become deluded and believe lies and they begin to believe the lies are actually true. Now I want to talk to you today about three lies that will turn a disciple into a Pharisee. Have you ever known a person that used to be on fire for God and now they're just dull as a brick? They used to be like worshipers and now they're just like intellectuals and they lost the flame of God and you wonder what happened I'll tell you what in their personal life things were going on and rather than changing those things 
they determined to change the Bible to justify those things. They thought, I'll change the truth and that will make me free. Well, let me give you what those uh, lies are. Number one, lie. God desires to bless and prosper you no matter what. And they turn God into, uh, he's just someone who's interested in wanting you to prosper in life and be promoted. And that's all God wants. And no matter what, he just wants to bless you and prosper. Lie, lie, pants on fire. That's not true. That's not the God of the Bible. God has a bigger purpose in prosperity. The blessing is that when we come under his authority and we enter into his purpose, then God blesses us with all kinds of spiritual riches. And sometimes we get all kinds of good things too. But it's all for his glory and his purpose. Number two, God exists to serve you and expects nothing from you. God exists, that God is a cosmic gopher, that God is some kind of a heavenly waiter, like, okay, what can I do for you? Just ask me anything, I'll hook a brother up. That, that God somehow has been reduced to this guy who, who doesn't have an agenda. All he wants to do is serve you, and all he wants to do is for you to prosper and everything be good. He expects nothing from you. You know where that came from. That came straight from the devil. It's a lie that God is centered on you know, your purpose and what you want. God has a great agenda of love, and you get to serve his great purpose. What about that scripture that says, to whom much is given, much is required? God will make us all give an account for our life, but liars don't believe it. And if you believe that lie, that you'll never have to give an account, brother, what Jesus did on the cross made it where I'll never have to give. Jesus said every man will give an account for his life, what he did, what he did and what he didn't do. This is not a game where Jesus won it all, so you do nothing. These are lies that turn Christians into Pharisees. Number three, there are no consequences for disobedience. Well, because of the cross, you know, you can disobey, you can, you know, do what you want, run off on your wife, do whatever you want, and there's no consequences, brother. That's a lie from the devil. Let me just read you some scripture, and these are the exact words of Jesus to people in the last days who have come under a delusion. Matthew 24, now this is literally Jesus speaking in the same chapter as we started with, chapter 24 of Matthew, about the end of time. This is a picture he lays out. This is what he says. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if, there's another if, that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and to drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and in an hour when he is not aware of and he will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It doesn't sound to me like there's no consequences. It sounds to me that there are these group of servants and some have going to say, well, I'm going to keep doing what Jesus, I'm going to keep giving people their food in season. I'm just going to be faithful to the end. He said, if you're that guy, when Jesus comes back, he's going to bless you. He's going to put you over all that he has. But if he comes back and you're one of his servants and he, and he, he finds that you said, you know what? He ain't coming back. I'm just going to do my thing. And he finds you out partying and getting drunk and doing all kinds of stuff, beating folks and forgetting what you were called to do. He said, I'm going to, he's, it's an illustration, but he says, the master of that servant will come back and cut him in two. Now, I don't know about you, but it just doesn't sound, this is Jesus speaking. I don't know where people get the idea that Jesus is so nice. They made Jesus to be something that they want him to be, but Jesus, in fact, is telling the truth. And somebody said, well, well, my, my, my pastor, my preacher, listen, I'm sure you have a pastor and a great guy and that you preacher's a great guy, but listen, look, something about what Jesus says grips me. 
And when Jesus says, you better be careful, you better watch out, and you better stay focused to the very end. And don't lose focus on what God is calling you to do, because if you do, there are some consequences that are coming. He said, I'm going to give you a portion with the hypocrites. What's he talking about? Weeping and gnashing of teeth. At least he's indicating that hell might happen to those people who are once servants but decided to slough off. Now you say, well, that's not my doctrine, brother. Well, I don't care. That's the doctrine of Jesus. And it's in there. You can't, well, Jesus' words, you can't trust them. I, this is the only words you can't trust because what Jesus said was truth. In fact, Jesus is the truth. There's no bigger revelation. So I, you said, Pastor Brady, you're being so harsh. I'm not being harsh. The truth hurts. It's supposed to hurt. It's supposed to tell you, stop making up a God that's not really God. Stop making up a Jesus that's not really Jesus. Find the book, see what he said, and live in the fear of God based on what he said. He promised that in the last days, there would be different kinds of Christianity with different kinds of messages. You're okay, I'm okay. God doesn't really care what you do. It really doesn't matter. Those lies turn disciples into Pharisees. Now, let me just give you three truths that will transform Pharisees into disciples. Number one, Jesus makes disciplined learners who obey him from the heart. Jesus doesn't make Christians. Jesus doesn't make church members. Jesus makes disciplined learners under his lordship who obey him because they love him from the heart. Well, you know, everybody's a Christian. No, everybody's not a Christian. Everybody, just because they go to a church doesn't make them a Christian. If you're in a garage, does it make you a car? If you're in McDonald's, does it make you a hamburger? No, you're not a Christian because you associate with Christians. You're a Christian because you become a disciplined learner and you obey him, obey him with love and passion from the heart. Are you making it hard? No, I'm making it real. Listen, if something doesn't cost you something, it's not worth anything. And the devil has tried to make Christianity worthless by giving it away for a dollar and a half. You don't have to even do anything. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to change. Just believe and say a quick, you know, 30-second prayer, and man, everything's good. And it's not. It's just like getting inoculated. You get just enough of the real thing. You get just enough of it that you'll never get the real thing. Now, I'm not angry, but, you know, truth is designed that when you know it, it'll make you free. Number two, sin. Sins must be confessed and repented of in order to be forgiven. They say, no, brother, you, oh, you don't understand. Now that I'm in Christ, I, uh, it means you never have to repent again. What a lie. Jesus' message was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You just have to say I'm wrong. See, we live in a world where everybody, you can't tell anybody they're wrong. You got to make everybody feel good. You got to everybody. But the problem is truth doesn't, doesn't hurt you. Truth makes you free. The person who loves you, you know, your mama, she'll tell you the truth. If you don't look good in that dress, she'll just say, girl, you better not wear that dress. You look like you gained 20 pounds. Well, that's not because she hates you. But you might have other friends say, oh, girl, you look so good. You don't look good. But the people who love you, they don't care about your feelings as much as they care about you. And that's the way real love is. Well, we just can't hurt people's feelings. Listen, rather hurt your feelings than hurt your eternity. Rather hurt your feelings than lose your life. Repentance and honesty before God. Confession is necessary. Well, I don't like to be reminded of the bad things. You don't have to be reminded. Just confess them, repent, receive forgiveness, and move on. Let's not make a huge issue of it, but the idea that Christians don't repent, that's from the devil. That came from the dark side. Repentance is the hallmark of every healthy relationship. I got married. I know this to be a fact. My one great skill in marriage and happiness is the willingness to say I'm sorry. And the only reason we're still kissing and hugging, still, the only reason is because I learned how to say, dude, I'm wrong. I don't say dude, I say sweetie, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's my, it's my one great marriage counseling skill. I teach men, just say you're wrong, dude. You know why? Because it opens up the door of grace. 
Grace starts flowing when you say, I was wrong. And of course, you know, my wife occasionally says she's wrong. <laughs> she's hardly ever wrong. But when she, she actually will say it. And you know what? We understand that healthy relationships are about this honesty. It's not about perfection. It's not about not making mistakes, but it is about honesty. If you want to raise healthy children, listen, you're going to make mistakes. And when you can't be perfect, be honest. Just say, Dad lost his temper. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Just say, Dad blew it. I should have been here. Say what you got to say. But if you believe a doctrine that says repentance is something religious, you believe the lie from the devil. Repentance is something beautiful. It's humility. It's honesty, it's truth, it's love. It is this great transaction that Jesus said, forgive other sins as your Father has forgiven you. It's part of the Lord's Prayer as we forgive others as they forgive us, our trespasses. This idea that we are not perfect, but you know what? We have a a perfect heart before God of humility and, and that's what saves us. And I'm not saved through repentance. I'm saved through a heart of honesty and humility that brings the grace of God on my life. You know, Jesus says, God resists the proud. Religion is proud. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Now listen, I'm not saying be beat up and sad all the time and always repenting and always conscious of I was wrong and I was wrong. Look, that's, that's just as bad as the other. Religion will make you feel guilty and try to control you all the time. Don't get religious. Just take a moment and get real. Lord, that was wrong. Please forgive me. Receive forgiveness. Conscience clear. Moving on. This is what God has for you. Don't believe a false doctrine that your sins are forgiven because what Jesus did 2,000 years ago They are potentially forgiven, but there's a living relationship with Jesus that you have to keep current with, that you don't let yourself just run wild and say, I'm I'm righter with God than I've ever been. That's a false doctrine, and it's a lie, and it won't set you free. It'll get you more of what you've been getting. It'll keep you in bondage. It'll steal your vision. It'll steal your joy. The enemy's a thief. False doctrines are thieves. Cast them down. Here's a truth that'll set you free. Just say you're sorry. Receive grace and move on with God. This is what it says in 1 John 1, 9, Passion Translation. But if we freely admit our sins when his light uncovers them, he will be faithful to forgive us every time. God is just to forgive our sins because of Jesus, because of Christ. And he will continue to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, that's just the truth. That'll set you free, won't it? Just when you're wrong, say you're wrong. When you're doing something wrong, just say you're wrong. And Jesus said, Peter said, well, Lord, how many times do we have to forgive people? 70 times? Jesus said, uh, 70 times seven. How I many you know Peter needed that 70 times seven? And most of us do. Well, I don't like to keep repenting. I don't like to listen. Jesus said, hey, I got you 70 times seven. I don't even want to know what that is. 70 times 7, what is 7 times 7? 490 times? Something like that? <laughs> a day? Well, look, some, t- some of you need 490 times a day. But you know what? That's how you live in freedom. You say, oop, blew it, oop, blew it, oop, blew it. But you keep on moving with God and you keep on living in grace. Why? Not because you're sin conscious. You are righteousness conscious, but you're also conscious of the fact that when you're wrong, you need to say, I was wrong and receive the grace to change. Repentance is not a thing of the past. It's a mark of right relationship. This is what this love is built on, that even when we're goofing up, he still believes in us and keeps encouraging us. This is the dynamic of a loving relationship with Jesus. Number three, and this is the last truth that will turn a Pharisee into a disciple. Disciples live in the love and the light of a divine purpose. Jesus said, just burn in your soul. Jesus said, now all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now you go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always. Sign Jesus. My commander, the one I love, he left me an assignment. He left you an assignment. And every true disciple is burning with a great purpose. If you lost your purpose, no wonder you're drifting. Don't even go to church anymore and you don't feel it. You don't want to go stand there and clap. And Listen, what you need to do is say, you know what? God has a great purpose. I need to get with it. 
And this great divine purpose is not God pressuring you. This great divine purpose is God demonstrating that he left the most important part to you. Jesus won it on the cross and then he handed it to you and said, now let the whole world know about it. This is your divine purpose. Get into it. Let Jesus reignite you into the new. Do the new for Jesus. Get rid of those doctrinal lies. Step into the truth and the truth will make you free. I love this, Matthew 24. I'm going to close with this. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world as a witness to all nations. Then will the end come. Jesus said, this is what's going to happen. There's all kinds of false doctrine, all kinds of weird Christian things that are happening, all kinds of, you know, oppressions and wars and, you know, diseases. And he said, all that's going to happen, but that's not the deal. At the end of the day, this gospel is going to be preached to all Kingdoms, the gospel, excuse me, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world as a witness to all nations. Then will the end come. He's never made it easier to win the whole world than right now. He just needs some passionate hearts to rise up and do it. This was the moment you were born for. Jesus knew that in the last days he was going to have to have a certain kind of people who would shake off the false doctrine, move into a passionate relationship with Jesus, get fire on their head, and enter into the new. This is your season, and you need to rise up and take it. This is your greatest hour. Get out of all that dust and ashes and shackles of the past. Step into the new that Jesus has for you because this is your moment. We're going to pray right now. We're going to begin to worship and pray right now, right where you are. If you're not right with God and you've let your heart get cluttered by sins that you haven't dealt with and your heart has grown cold, it's not too late. All you have to do, deal with it. Right now, all across the room, just bow your head. I'm going to help you pray. Just pray right now. Say, Lord, in Jesus' name, I come to you. I repent for the wrong things I've been doing. Now, right now, just whisper what those things are in God's presence. Just say, I, I repent for the things I've been doing. Pray with me. I believe on the cross when you shed your blood. You shed it for the forgiveness of my sins. I receive forgiveness. I receive cleansing. I receive healing. Come on, release your faith. I receive grace to change. And pray something powerful with me. Say, Jesus Christ, as of this moment, I confess and I declare you are the Lord of my life. All that I am, all that I'm not, I give you everything. Take the darkness from my life. Bring me into your love and into your life. Come on, say it out loud. I believe as of this moment, I'll never be the same again. I'll never be the same again. Come on, while the worship is playing, you're just going to worship Jesus and the Holy Spirit is going to cause a miracle inside of you. Everything is about to change. What does the Bible say? If any man's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Everything is becoming new. Come on, let's do the new. Get out of the old. Let's do the new together, can we? Come on, let's just worship God right now and thank you for what he's doing. Thank you, that, thank, him, thank him that you're free. We've seen what you can do, oh God of wonders. Your power has no end. The things you've done before in great. Do it again.
obliterate And now you're seated Forever on the throne So I should my
Thanks for joining Harvest at Home. If this ministry is a blessing to you, here's how you can give. Text the amount to 84321 or go to our website, theharvest.us, and click give.